now tell me, Caio, George keeps ruining your fire in that he keeps talking <laughs> about the hyaluronidase data. He keeps calling it PEG, <laughs> um, PH20. What, what is he talking about? He's talking about uh, using a brick to break <laughs> concrete <laughs> and try to get, uh, you know, chemotherapy to the tumor bed. I think that's a good mimic. I think not even you, George, could do as good as that, could you? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so, you know, hyaluronidase is an enzyme that uh, breaks hyaluronic acid. And it's a component of this trauma in pancreatic cancer. It's a component of this concrete. And, um, you know, in preclinical models, in animal models, it showed that in combination with gems gemcitabine, that's the first preclinical model done, it improved outcome. In, uh, and the, the, uh, with the addition of uh, the hyaluronic dates to gemcitabine. This was segue into a phase one trial that showed you know, promising results. This led to a randomized phase two trial that the results were not ex as, as so exciting as it was felt in the beginning, but then when they stratified the population based upon the immunohistochemistry um, uh, expression of uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, you know, two plus or three plus, then there was really a widening of the survival, favoring the experimental arm with the addition of the uh, PEG, uh, uh, PG8, uh, PH20, hyaluronidase, to gemcitabine and abipaclitaxel. In the randomized phase three trial is ongoing, that is uh, word of mouth that things are going in the right direction. Yeah, so this is, this is gem, nabipaclitaxel, plus or minus the hyaluronidase. <laughs> One, one more issue here is that, and I think this is very important about uh, quality control and uh, watching the trial that, uh, you know, the patients are going through. I remember <coughs> being part of the phase, the randomized phase two trial when we got a call that the, the accrual was suspended. The safety monitoring committee uh, called it off because there was an excess of uh, a thromboembolic events. It's already a phenomenon that is very prevalent in pancreatic cancer, but you know, patients that were receiving the study, study drug had a higher incidence of thromboembolic events. Initially, they used a low dose of uh, low molecular weight uh, uh, heparin and oxparin at, uh, you know, a fixed dose of 40 milligrams. And there was some improvement, but was not, you know, as, as, as uh, uh, you know, uh, there was a still a higher incidence in the study arm, but they actually had to go up to one milligram per kilogram per dose anticoagulation dose to really diminish the risk of thromboembolic events. So if this agent makes to our shelf, it's going to be with a tag <laughs> of anoxaparin to it. And interesting because there has been a trial in, done in the past with uh, a low molecular happening that did not improve survival but decreased the incidence of thromboembolic events. So that actually may impact, you know, that uh, phenomenon in pancreatic cancer in addition to improving outcome. I mean, I've kind of always looked for an excuse to give. Yes. To uh, give it, yeah, absolutely. Right? I, I hate doing it to patients because it's not fun, but, uh, you know, this might give us our excuse. But yeah. what if I can even get somebody to provide it, yeah. right? Because yeah. there's, it's I mean, expensive. they're already doing, you know, their insulin injections, and now you're going to throw <laughs> this in. Uh -huh. um, but the trials that were done with heparin, heparin-like compounds, unfortunately, their endpoints were clot, not survival. So we'll have to see what, mm. what impact this really has. It'll be interesting. Um, but it's what we said earlier, if this drug is positive, if this trial is positive, uh, then it's going to set the table for sequencing for us. Mm -hmm. So it'll simplify things. Um, and hopefully, you know, uh, it's a nine-month progression-free survival. So that should translate into maybe a 15, 14-month overall survival. So that's a whopper. So that's, that's, really, that's really good. Yeah, I mean, the other, the other exciting thing, if this holds up, is that this is a biomarker-selected population, yes. right? And it may be the first truly validated biomarker that we have in, in this disease. So we'll see. I mean, I think, again, sort of optimism that this uh, may hold up, uh, but it, it's, it's exciting. Optimism and pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Yeah, well, you just said a whopper <laughs> would be a three-month improvement in survival. <laughs> okay, take them out, John. <laughs> so, is, there, is there any other cancer that uh, a stroma-targeted therapy is approved? There's some breast uh, 
subtypes that are stromal associated. But it I does understand, but, but is there a target agent to the stroma that has been up? I think it was going to well, be the, the hedgehog first. inhibitors and basal cell carcinomas and yeah. glioblastomas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not glioblastomas, but uh, medulloblastomas. But, but it does simplify things earlier that it is we're hitting the stroma and we're hitting the cancer cells simultaneously. And that is a, a nice theme to have, right? Mm. I mean, Absolutely. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm not that complex. Mm. <laughs> this tumor is very complex, but if we could hit it with three drugs that have a very similar mechanism, mm. that's very interesting.